There you go, Dandelion and Mordecai. All right. If you eat all your seed, I'll sing you your song. Oh, boy. Eat all your seed. That's why I put the xylophone here. Eat all your seed. I love chickens. Eat all your seed. Cluck, cluck, cluck. Bad Rancher. Where are my eggs? <laughs> Don't look at me like that, I told you. I want my f eggs! You're gonna get it. Go with the Good Ranchers. 100% American sourced steakhouse quality meats. Subscribe today at goodranchers.com slash Crowder and lock in your $25 off every box for the entire life of your subscription. Good Ranchers, American meat delivered. June 18th, Pikes Peak Center, Colorado Springs, Colorado, prepares for the funniest show on earth. Moving right along. Put loose and fancy free. Getting there is half the fun, compare it with me. Moving right along. Boy, that is uh, delicious. Oh, am I uh, am I getting a little room noise, or is that just me and my headphones? Uh, I think that's. Is it just me and my headphones? All right, that's just so. me and my headphones. Good, uh, good. You know what it was? We were recording that music here the other day, in this room. Yeah. And so I had to change the levels, and I uh, I won't be able to hear right for a week. Glad to be with you. Sorry, we're a little late. Uh, some technical uh, difficulties uh, that happened with. Uh, uh, let's just blame it on Twitter. Fair. Yeah, we'll blame it on Twitter for today, uh, and that is going to be look. First off, uh, well, we have Gerald B in studio. You guys see this because he's a, uh, he's a, uh, hi, yeah. Gerald A is having uh, his his wife is with child, and uh, I don't know if you know that, but Gerald Gerald B does a great impression of a lamprey. You see that? He's guys, very I'm good. gay. Yeah, he's a. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that that's his catchphrase. Yeah, uh, I think that soundboard might be coming in a little bit hot. I don't know if it's just me. It could be my headphones acting up, but sorry, it's just it's distracting me. It might be the headphones. It could just be the headphones. Let's hear it again, and I'll check. Guys, I'm gay. Oh, no, that sounds about no, right. sounds good. Yeah, that no. sounds good. <laughs> Spot on. So we're going to be talking today, not, not just about Twitter. Uh, we're going to be talking about the, uh, the Ministry of Truth that uh, this administration is, is, is in incorporating right now, that they're putting into action, which is absolutely terrifying. And uh, with Twitter, people have been talking about how they've been gaining followers, right? Or I've been losing followers. But once you get past the sort of uh, uh, histrionics, um, the ostentatious, just, ah, ah, what does it really mean? We've run some numbers, not just for personalities, but specifically politicians. Which politicians have gained followers, what they've gained. Which politicians have, uh, have lost followers, what they've lost, and what kind of a direct impact that could have on what? What? The election. Turns out, it doesn't really matter if Russia spends $6,000 on Facebook ads. Turns out that Twitter itself, and of course by proxy, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, can have a direct impact on an election. And we're not just talking about the New York Post story. Uh, we're talking about every single election from local, state, all the way up to federal. And it is shocking. It's startling. So this is good. This is good what we're seeing. It's, it, we're, we're, we're gaining some ground, but uh, it's not enough. Also, uh, we're going to enter a recession. That's something that a lot of people aren't talking about because it's nerdy. It's tough to get into, but we're going to try and consolidate it so you can understand why historically the metrics that we are seeing 
have never resulted in anything other than a woeful recession. So let me ask you this before, while we're talking about the Ministry of Truth and we'll be talking about Twitter, my question of the day to you is, and we'll pin the comment, uh, whoever uh, answers best, which lie is the worst that we've had from this administration at this point? The worst one. Not the one that bothers you, the worst one, the most egregious. Uh, you know him, you love him. You have Gerald B. back here, Mr. Lamprey. Look at that. He's there. Gorgeous. And then uh, we still, of course, have in third chair, uh, you know, you have at Landau Dave on the Twitter. And uh, he's going to be in Green Bay, Wisconsin this Saturday. And then uh, the Meyer Theater. And then, of course, we're in Colorado Springs uh, in June. Lotofcutter.com slash tour. You can book your tickets. How are you, Dave? Ahoy. I'm good. And Lincoln, Nebraska, I think, next weekend. And uh, yeah, ahoy. Good. Just, and you just and I, lay off. I just wanted to share. It's enough. It's a Lincoln. Like well, Abe. Yeah, I know. Or the car. <laughs> yeah, that's fine, too. Honest Abe, I couldn't do the old. He, he couldn't do the Oldsmobile Theater. He's not there yet. <laughs> Lincoln Logs. Yeah. They'll never. Hey, watch it, or we'll never let you perform at Pontiac. I bet there was an Oldsmobile Theater. Oh, I guarantee you. I would have liked to go there. And it's just a theater that nobody knows exists anymore, but it's no. still there. The seats are all just plush maroon. Yes, <laughs> just velvet. <laughs> your your dad smoking up front. I'm like, I thought you were dead. Not in this theater. Not in this. Not in the Oldsmobile <laughs> Theater. We're all ghosts. Yes. <laughs> You, matter, it's almost like you're the ghost because you're the only one who's not. It's I'm a reverse ghost. Oh, the front sections, the Cutlass Sierra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before that, we also, by the way, the pandemic is over. We'll get to that in a second, according to Dr. Fauci. Um, first, this is we confirm this is real, right? We confirm this is real. We're sure this Thanks is real. So, yeah. I watched this and I thought, well, this must be a parody. And that's how you know the left is beyond parody. When it took us about 30 minutes to do some research, that means looking through this guy's LinkedIn, looking through his Facebook, looking through his TikTok, going, is this an actual thing? Turns out it is. And uh, he wants to apologize for the way white people look. White people don't make no sense. I'm here trying to gear myself up. And, and, you know, hot myself up to go up into work. That seems so fake. I thought I'd put on some of yes. my lip it's gloss. Not. This yeah. is my Morphe one. Oh. Tastes like sour babies. Good, Good for his dad. I'm just sitting here rubbing my lips together, and I'm like, well, sh**. I ain't hardly got no lips. You ever seen the Latina in her 50s look like she's in her 30s? Because I know, for a damn fact, you've seen a white woman in her 30s look like I've she's in her 50s. seen a Latina in her 20s look like she's 50. Half the time, yes, white I... folks hit 30, and they lose their damn chins. Just, just up and lose them. Really, anywhere from 20 to 50. I mean, I ain't 30. trying to make nobody <laughs> mad, but I mean, shit. A lot of us out here looking like bony ass meat sacks to me. That's just you. <laughs> Who decided we were the elite? On behalf of white folks, I want to apologize to everyone because we must be a deluded bunch because we done convinced ourselves a whole ass lie. He sounds like Zach I mean, Elfinakis doing the effeminate this racism. This really yes. don't make no sense to me. <laughs> I'm over here feeling ugly. Yeah, in a wet bandit's toque. Yeah, it just... <laughs> man, I just... All I'm saying is when the neighbors moved in, my property value dropped. I ain't trying to say nothing wrong. Who said that we are the elite? And then he goes, on behalf of white people, trying to insinuate yeah. that he's a part of the elite, like he's he's a hipster SEAL Team 6. Right. Yeah. Look, look. No one is saying that you are elite. Now, insert any other race with what he just said. White people look like bony-ass bags of meat. Black women look like big-ass ba bags of meat. Can't yeah. say that. No, it would be awful. And just, I, look, I'm just trying to look normal. I'm putting on lipstick. I'm painting my nails. My nails black. <laughs> I, I got a dangly cross ring. I got this hat that looks like I'm in Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. Yeah, what's going on here? And I will say this. Having twins, this really I was just talking uh, with, with Pops Crowder about this yesterday. And you, have a, you have a son, but I, I have, do. you know, young boy, young girl. Okay. Yeah, I am a twin. And I, I love them both dearly, but you have yes. a twin brother. So with one yes. boy, one girl, I said, look, I am going to, there's always going to have to be some untraining, some sort of deconditioning, right, from society, especially if you understand the world we live in. With my, and there needs to be balance for both of them. But with my daughter, I know that I'm going to have to correct the record that says, you are beautiful, you are perfect, just the way, you are. What, no matter what it is, if she's anorexic, skinny, you're beautiful, you're perfect. If she's overweight, blood type pudding, you're beautiful, you're perfect. If she works, you're beautiful, you're perfect. If she doesn't work, you're beautiful, you're perfect. That's what, that's what the message is. And I know that I'm going to have to decondition my son from being bombarded as a piece of shit for something he has no control over because he's a white male. No one is going to be telling my young white 
male boy that he's fantastic. You're great just the way you are. It's the only subgroup of people whom you actively tell they need to change something about themselves, which is immutable. Now, of course, I want my daughter to find her self-esteem and her values and her accomplishments, how she treats people. But no one is perfect. No one is beautiful and perfect the way they are. And no one's a piece of crap just because of how they were born. And it really is something that I think about a lot. And that guy just echoed it in a deeply disturbing way. Yeah. And if anybody's telling your white kid that they're beautiful and perfect, just be like, look, the, the stranger has candy and don't get it in the van. Right. That's the only person who's interested. Yeah, exactly. Next they gonna... really don't like white young men. It's, it sucks to say. I mean, because there's so many people that get mad when you say that. Right. But it's true. Like, this guy is just going on there to tell you that white people are garbage. I know. And he's white. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Well, this is why you have, you know, older boomers. We talked about these statistics the other day. All the references are available at ladderscredit.com. They were more racist. Then you had a dip with Generation X and older millennials, our generation. They were the least racist. And then you had it go up again with younger millennials and Zoomers. Why? Did, did we all of a sudden become more racist? No. What happened is there was a divide and conquer and the left said, we need to reawaken. We, we need to refan the flames, the fire of racism, in order to gain votes. That's what happened, and that's what you're seeing here. When we grew up, we didn't even think about it. Fre the biggest shows, from The Cosby Show to Fresh Prince to Family Matters. You'd have Family Matters You'd have right next to Patrick Duffy on Step by Step. That's the, that's the white and black cookie. Well, no, it's because young guys who are white come up. Let's say you're white, and you see that guy. Yeah. Well, you hate him, and you hate the people that he's siding with. Right. And then the black and people hate him too yes yeah so, so it's pretty much his fault it should be unifying yeah that guy yeah everybody should hate that guy yes exactly there you go common <laughs> ground and if you're not in a band stop painting your nails you're a cashier yes stop it <laughs> sir so here's something else a little more policy focused but this is hey this is great this is good news and we need to celebrate good news that's been the theme of this week uh on april 26th so a couple of days ago and we didn't have time to talk about it because we didn't ash wednesday yesterday uh, uh anthony fauci the science Yes. Declared on air that America is officially out of the pandemic. What? Dr. Fauci, let me broaden this out and ask you, here we are, it's the end of April, it's the spring of 2022. How close are we to the end of this pandemic? Well, that's an unanswerable question for the following reason. And, and I don't want to be evasive about it, but let me tell you why I'm Judy. giving you that answer, Judy. We are certainly right now in this country out of the pandemic phase. There it is! Um, wait, hold on, Stephen. Uh, we, we still have another clip. Huh? We still have another clip. I think uh, Saki followed this up. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So there's no question that we're in a moment, a different moment in our fight against COVID. But we also know COVID isn't over and the pandemic isn't over. <laughs> Sorry to well, shit. Know, rain on the parade. Yeah. I just don't know anymore. I thought he was the science. He was. Is she the science? Is she Mrs. Science? She's the new science. I don't, oh, gosh. Well, and then we're losing the science to MSNBC. Now MSNBC is going to have a corner on the science. That's just not fair. It's because with her skin, she can't get any vitamin D in it. No. At least not natural sunlight. Not possible. She'll just burn. Yeah. Also. Like a vampire. Yeah. She, <laughs> she can't. And she can't do her makeup because if she looks in the mirror, she doesn't see anything. If you open one blind during that press conference. Yeah. She, she lights a blaze. Burn. All right. <laughs> So here's uh, something else, by the way. Uh, the minister, this, well, people are calling it this, but this is something that I was talking about. And before we get to Twitter, uh, I, I said this the other day don't just look at the story. Look at the people who are telling the story or the people who are defending the story or the people on the opposing side of the political spectrum, you know, where you find yourself. And how are they defending it? Or try and observe their self awareness. To me, what's concerning about this is uh, this next story, is that no one at this administration just said, oh, wait, no, that's bad. That's going to look bad. We want to do it. We just don't tell people that we do it. Right? It's sort of like athletes. Like, well, we want to cheat. We just, we just lie because we know that it yeah. reflects poorly upon us and people know that we cheat. That's why we buy urine. Exactly. That's clean. Or in the case of the Russian uh, Olympic team, it's the government just supplies urine. Well, of course. So, And steroids. Yes. <laughs> 
Uh, Homeland Security, uh, the Secretary uh, Alejandro Mayorkas, announced yesterday. Evil Jeff, Jeff Bezos? Yes, evil yeah. Jeff Bezos. Evil, Be well, <laughs> eviler Jeff Bezos. Yeah, yeah more, evil. more evil Jeff Bezos. I didn't know that was possible. Maybe slightly less evil Jeff Bezos. <laughs> yeah. So, And this just happens to be coinciding with Twitter being purchased by Elon Musk, which we'll get to in a second, and the changes therein. Uh, Mayorkas just announced the creation of the... Official misinformation. This is the government. So I don't want to hear it's a private company anymore because this entity that is being created by your government, its sole purpose is designed to get its tentacles into private companies. The Misinformation Governance Board, let's hear Mayorkas describe it. Our undersecretary uh, for policy, Rob Silvers, is co-chair uh, with our principal deputy general counsel, Jennifer Daskal, in... Um, leading a just recently constituted uh, um, misinformation, disinformation governance board. So we're ah. bringing, uh, the goal is to bring Why the resources the of the moon? department <laughs> together to address this threat. I just read a very interesting study that underscores the importance uh, of the, the point that you make, uh, the, the spread of mis and disinformation in minority communities specifically. And Gotta we are get focused that on that in the context of our CP3 and other efforts. Now, again, the government saying we're going to create a board, and if you, you can go and check the references, whose purpose is primarily designed to pressure social media companies into doing their bidding. For example, things like not allowing information out there, you know, like the, the Wuhan lab leak theory, or the Hunter Biden story, or uh, the CDC death rates for which we were suspended on YouTube, right? The CDC actual death rates, just flu versus COVID for children, right? The, this is misinformation. Or um, reports on a violation of uh, Pennsylvania's uh, own high court, right, regarding mail-in elections. This kind of misinformation. Again, this wouldn't be as concerning if they weren't wrong all the time and even have admitted to, okay, we got that one wrong. It's still pretty concerning because anytime the government says, we're going to determine what information is permissible or impermissible, um, you've now given up your freedom of speech across all platforms. You can't, say it's a, you can't say it's a private company anymore if the government gets to tell private companies what is considered permissible under the guise of misinformation. And by the way, the person that he names who's heading this up, uh, Nina Yankowitz, she's a global fellow at the <laughs> nonpartisan Wilson Center. Good thing that it's nonpartisan. Let me read you a couple of this broad's tweets. She <laughs> said, after Elon Musk purchased Twitter, I shudder to think about if free speech absolutists were taking over more platforms. Ah. She also called the Hunter Biden laptop a, quote, Trump campaign product. Very middle of the road. Yes. A <laughs> Trump campaign product. That is proactive misinformation. <laughs> Think about this. That was from the New York Post. And no one denied its authenticity right. aside from social media platforms. No one else in the press really, no one else in the actual press, like New York Times, they didn't say this isn't a true story. They just didn't like the story. This person who is now going to determine what shows up or at least they're going to attempt to. I think Elon Musk is probably going to put up some walls. Uh, said it was just a campaign product for Donald Trump. That is proactively trying to subvert democracy. What the left accuses you of doing, they do themselves. It really is. It's the Alinsky 101. Andrew Breitbart talked about that. Just like you're seeing with Amber uh, Heard and Johnny Depp. She would accuse him of a borderline personality disorder when the, the shrink's like, no, you. <laughs> Who pooped in the bed, Amber? Yeah. So what? let me, uh, yeah, yeah, who pooped in the bed? No. What? what? It was a prank. It was a prank after you left him and his mother was dying. Don't you do that? What? How do you comfort your spouse? His mom was dying, so I pooped in his bed. Oh, I forgot you never made a mistake. <laughs> so I'm only human. Yeah, barely. I mean, not really. Not if you, I mean, I don't have a soul. No, I mean, sugar water. I need sugar water. <laughs> so uh, this is a Democrat activist now who is at the head of this board and uh, just to give you some examples the misinformation governance board if only we would have some historical precedent oh that's right we do of government boards determining what information is allowable uh, used to mainly apply to the press but of course now you are the press this is what this whole fight is about with twitter right now you are the press that's why the government needs to step in they used to be able to send some marching orders to just a handful of outlets right all the news that's fit to print three networks now you're the press. Now you have a camera. 
Now you can do your own digging like us. And so they have to make sure they create a government board to shut it down because we can't have you being the press. But once upon a time, we did have these kinds of boards that existed to specifically send marching orders to the press. We had the uh, Reich Ministry of Public Enlightenment and Propaganda. If they do it, my general rule is go another direction, but that's just one way. <laughs> sure there was, uh, there's the publicity department at the uh, Central, Comi uh, Central uh, Committee for the uh, Communist Chinese Party. There's North Korea's Propaganda and Agitation Department. And, of course, uh, there's the fictional 1984 Orwell's Ministry of Truth, which, again, does this exact thing. There's no self-awareness for them to just say, hey, you know what, hold on a second, if we're doing something that Orwell fictitiously described as a dystopian future. But you mean nonfiction. Yes, exactly. That's what you mean. Yes, that's yes. what I mean, it became that way. He may have written it as fiction. Yeah. Spot on. They're going to have to recategorize it They've, at the airport right they, next to the white guilt checklist books. Yes, and the DVD of Idiocracy. Yes. <laughs> And we actually do have some, uh, oh, if I'm not mistaken, um, right, okay, right now, right? Yeah. Right now on CNN, they're uh, an interaction with a misinformation board and uh, it's someone with an infraction. This is a CNN Plus special report. Yes? Nothing. That's right. Because you know, deep down, you deserve to be punished. Yeah. That was, I guess, that was CNN Plus. Oh. Oh, is that what that was? Yeah, they have some weird licensing agreements. Oh, I thought it was an old Elliot Page movie. Yeah, I don't necessarily Guys, know. Guys, I'm gay. Come on. Gerald, that's Gerald. out of line. Yeah, I'm that's out of line. of his work. Gerald B. Still doing the lamprey though. It's uncanny. It really is. It really something. is. Yeah. It really is. All I right. like uh, I like his teeth better. Yeah. 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 Well, you know what? None of them were shot out with a BB gun. No, that's true. Not a one. Yeah. Also, around the office gets more use out of it with uh, choice us. Yeah. No, we have fun with him. Yeah. Well, we need to. We have disinfectant around here. So look, <laughs> smash the like button really quickly because we're going to get some algorithm information here <laughs> on Twitter, uh, YouTube hitting like. Commenting helps. Sharing, we're now seeing, is the most important if you share it on YouTube. And I, I hate to be that guy who asks you to do those things, but I want to be able to get through this information on Twitter uh, without having to kind of break it apart. We got a new share button. Oh, do we? Yeah. What is it? Let me see. Oh, Click you can't it. see it yet? Oh. Ooh. I don't know. I kind of like this, the Care Bear thing. Yeah, yeah. It was gay, but I was okay with it. What happened? Guys, I'm gay. That's way I too loud know, going through the board. Gerald it's louder Bain. than anybody else. you got to take the volume down on him being gay. I mean, I get he's emphatic about his gayness. And we're proud of him for that. Yeah. No, we are. I mean, it yeah, takes... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it takes it balls. Takes, <laughs> yeah, it does. It takes balls, especially when, you know, he's... I mean, he's in the hospital with his beard having another child. Yes. It's hard to live a double life like Gerald. No, it is. And yeah. it's nice that he sent that his, you know, his, his stunt double. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah. But, and by the way, we do pay scale. So... Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Twitter, this has been happening, right? Elon Musk is, keep in mind, Elon Musk isn't at the helm at Twitter right now. So this is also some context that you need to keep in mind. Uh, whatever changes you're seeing at Twitter, okay? A lot of people are going, oh, Elon uh, bought Twitter, and there's this hero worship of him, and I'm really glad that he purchased Twitter. But what you are seeing- Self-inflicted. It's people okay. running around with their heads cut off, the board at going, Twitter. oh my God, this is going, oh my God, hold on a second. People are gonna find out. So if you're seeing these numbers change, by the millions, by the way, that's Twitter's own people. It's their own staff right now Covering trying to cover their ass. 100%. So let's keep that in context. And then I want to get to some numbers that, um, that not only are surprising, uh, but their direct impact. And there are studies on this uh, as to how it could affect the outcome of elections. We're not even talking about the freest and fairest election as far as the actual mail-in votes or if mailer, voter fraud has ever occurred ever. You could type voter fraud in at lottoscrowder.com for all those references, but we would never discuss it here. Of course, we'll do it on Mug Club later yes. uh, uh, where we do chat Thursday. But Correct. all right, you know this, Republican accounts, particularly conservative accounts, okay? But I wanted to focus on Republican and Democrats today because I wanted to focus on elected officials and then give you some personal examples. So uh, Republican Twitter accounts, right, they've seen a massive surge in followers while Democrat accounts have been shrinking. OK, here's the thing. Again, keep in mind, Marley was dead to begin with. Elon Musk isn't doing anything there right now. It's just the fear that he might at some point. Let me give you the follower differences between uh, uh, the 27th and the 30th. Uh, uh, that we see. Okay. So 
Republican followers gained. Let's go through Jim Jordan, 160,000. Okay, Marjorie Taylor Greene, so 150,000 gained. Ted Cruz, so 118,000 gained. Now let's contrast that with Democrats, notable Democrats, national figures. Bernie Sanders saw a decrease of 25,000. Hillary Clinton saw a decrease of 18,000. Elizabeth Warren saw a decrease of 16,000. Nancy Pelosi saw a decrease of 13,000. Allegedly with Hillary, Hillary Clinton, though, those people may have committed suicide. Yes, they may have all committed Allegedly. suicide. Allegedly. Well, here's the thing. is I want This is also something that, like I said, look at what the opposition is saying. How are they arguing? Now, when conservatives were removed from Twitter, right, what would you see if they were actual people? These were actual accounts. Because some liberals have tried to say, you know what, they're, 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 they're purging liberals now. They're just deleting liberals. This is authoritarianism. Okay, when conservatives were being removed from Twitter... Where they? they go to Facebook, they would go to Instagram, they would go on YouTube, right? They would go to Parler, they would go to Rumble and let you know, hey, I've been suspended. You always knew if someone was removed from Twitter, if it was an actual person. Are you seeing anyone on the left right now? Are you seeing any actual people telling you, my account was suspended, I was removed? That's not happening. They would be complaining about it. It's not. So you throw that out. We know that's not what's going on right now. So what is most likely happening? Okay, this is a theory. Uh, they're either purging accounts that were bots, that were fake accounts, because Elon Musk has said he's going to be really strict on that. So, of course, they don't want to be uh, you know, brought up on any kind of business malpractice charges. I don't necessarily know how they would apply with social media. So it's pretty clear they're either purging bots, non-existent accounts, and with conservatives, either banned accounts or being unbanned, falsely banned accounts, or uh, we all know this. Because you just saw a gain in like 10,000. 10,000 this week. I saw 50,000 in a day. It's crazy. And so many people have been saying, hey, I'm seeing you in my timeline for the first time in a very long time. People have chosen to follow my profile. And this is the thing with the algorithms. Sure, someone can follow you, but if someone follows you and unless they bookmark your page and check back every day, you might as well not exist. Which, by the way, is the reason we always tell you Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern. So you guys, if we're not here on YouTube, go to Rumble or watch us on Mug Club Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern. Just bookmark it and check back in. I'll get to YouTube stats in a second. Notifications, subscriptions don't necessarily work. So on the left, you see purging of accounts that weren't real. And on the right, you're seeing either unsuspending of accounts or just someone like Ted Cruz, his own people are seeing his stuff, so it gets retweeted, it gets put in their timeline, it's to pay it forward. That was, remember the whole idea of viral? Well, you can't go viral, nothing can go viral if it can't start. If you have 5 million people who follow you, but Twitter says, ah, you're only going to reach 20,000, the number doesn't matter. So that's what we're seeing. Now, let me, let me draw attention to this, because you just saw a gain with Republicans and a loss with Democrats. Okay. To the tune of millions, if you were to add them all up. Now, Princeton University, there's, there's research on this. They found that for every, this is a quote, for every 10% increase of Twitter users in a given county, right, that lowered the vote share of Donald Trump by 0.2 percentage points. Huh. That's weird. That could almost sway things. Yes. Think about that for a second. Think about right now they're saying Beto, you know, could win in Texas. They're like, <laughs> he's really close. He's within 2%. Okay? Well, now, now let's just say Abbott gains the followers just based on the natural algorithm, and right. all of a sudden Beto loses hundreds of thousands. You think that changes the election? So they combine algorithms. They combine throttling. They combine fake accounts. And by the way, this is a dirty little secret. I cannot substantiate this. I want to be clear. But I've worked in this industry for a very long time. You pay a, you pay a PR firm, you get a set amount of Twitter followers. Don't ask questions. Sort of like you pay a certain amount to a PR firm, you get a New York Times bestseller. By the way, no one really knows what uh, constitutes a New York Times bestseller. But you give us uh, a quarter million dollars, we guarantee it. Don't ask questions. So I'm sure that there are a lot of Democrat PR firms that have been buying up fake accounts. There are a lot of reasons that this has, been, this has been taking place. All of it points one direction. And again, if people, if you could comment below, send me examples. Are there any prominent Democrats? I haven't seen them saying, hey, I've been removed. I know they're threatening to leave and then they come back like Sean King, but I haven't seen any stories of Democrats en masse yeah. saying, I've been removed from Twitter, this is what's happening. I see them bitching about it, where we saw conservatives all the time get removed. Simply for points of view. So I gained uh, myself. Yeah, well, Sean King went, went dark for a day? Yes. And then, well, he, well, went, uh, he, well, went he went cream. He went black for He well, went cream He went for back a day. to cream for Yes. Well, he went right back. No, he was always cream. He just yeah. shut down his Twitter account. Oh. Poor choice of words. 
True. Yeah, he went black. He's never gone dark. He's never been black no. or dark. No. But he was cream. Yes. He's still cream. Eggshell. Eggshell white. Maybe a nice taupe. Yeah. Sable. Best. <laughs> so I gained 89,000 Twitter followers. Okay? 89,000 in the course of whatever, two or three days. Uh, now, let me also point this to you. Now, now, imagine this for a second. YouTube. This is something, too. So we're seeing this with Twitter. I can tell you there are some things I'll need to keep in my back pocket. So there's some info that I'll never be able to give to you until the time is right. But I will uh, share, share this with you because it would be publicly available if you wanted to search for it. Uh, for years, and uh, Toolman Tim, you've been working here for years, so you saw this happen. Yep. For, for years, we on average gained uh, over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube per month. We had some months that were a couple hundred thousand in a month. I think the average was around 120,000. Okay. Then we were demonetized with the Vox Apocalypse. And like that, to the day, all of a sudden we went from 130,000 new subscribers a month to... About 20,000, maybe 40,000 40, was the biggest month. Some months would be 10,000. Now, here's the thing. That's A-B test. Could be chance. We were remonetized on YouTube for four or five months before people complained about it. Again, average 130,000 new subscribers per month. Demonetized again. So now we have four examples. We have A, B, A, B. Went down to 10, 20,000 new subscribers a month. You're talking about a differential of hundreds of thousands in a month. And if you do those estimates, if you look at the algorithms for which there's been no explanation, no answer, we'd probably be at about 9 to 11 million subscribers uh, a month on YouTube. Not to mention the things like notifications working, subscriptions working. We have to tell you to bookmark the page and come back 10 a.m. Eastern every day and also let you know about Rumble and about Mug Club in case... We're not on YouTube because we get removed for a reason that is not described. Which, by the way, please do. That's why we don't make any revenue off of YouTube. We keep sponsors pretty limited. Go to lottowithcutter.com slash mug club. And, uh, you know, it's $69 for students, veterans, active military. You get the whole Blaze catalog. Uh, this is something that, again, I think people are talking. People need to not focus on, ah, I lost this. I gained that. What does that mean for the state of democracy? Remember the, the Russiagate, how long the media just even spoke about Donald Trump perhaps you know, using a Hi8 camera to uh, observe prostitutes urinating on Formica. That was a huge story. <laughs> of course. Meanwhile, we see the di difference of millions, millions of people being barred from following their supported elected officials and having others thrust before them. If you're concerned about the state of democracy, if you think there's some, you know, we want trust in our institutions, then you should absolutely be pushing for transparency. This can affect the state of the country, in addition to the Hunter Biden story, which we know would have changed the election. Hey, speaking well, yeah. of Sean King, uh, yes. he, he might be breaking some news. Oh, no. Oh, I, don't, I don't know what his sources are. He tweeted, I'm told this morning that Apple and Google will remove Twitter from the App Store if it does not moderate and remove hate speech under Elon Musk. This isn't a new policy, but a commitment already made. Amazon Web Services has the same commitment, so there's that. And then he replied to someone who probably was trying to call BS, and he said, spoke to staff at Google and Apple who referred me to the following policies. Yeah. Well, by the way, first off, there are a couple of things that are troubling in there. He spoke to officials at Google and Apple. Oh, we can never get a return call. We have far more influence and far more people who care about what we say than Sean King. Of course, they're selective in answering yeah. their calls, just like they're selective in who they decide to throttle. You know what else is? He mentions Jeff It'll Bezos wait. and Amazon being on board with it. Hey, hey, hold on a he's second. Like, hey, man, I talked to Alexa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alexa, is Elon, Mu <laughs> is Elon Musk a bitch? I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Alexa, is Elon Musk a bitch? Just it's me, Sean it. King. Come on, I have to use my other voice. It's me, Sean King. Oh, whiskers. His face recognition <laughs> software. He has to put on his ginger wig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or put on his <laughs> puts on his black wig over his ginger hair. Right. It's like it's like a Rachel Dolezal who got a perm so she could straighten it, so she oh. could act like she straightened her yes. <laughs> curly hair. No, here's the thing. He just mentioned Jeff Bezos, right? And Amazon. Does anyone see a problem with, is he the second richest guy? I don't know. I know Elon Musk is number one. Is Jeff Bezos number two or is he number three? I guess it depends on, well, does anyone see a problem with the number two richest guy now implementing a policy that would hurt the number one richest guy? Hey, what happened to antitrust? What happened to wanting accountability for businesses? Look, I want accountability across the board. And by the way, if this is true from Sean King, again, Here's an issue. Sean King doesn't have the self-awareness to say, ooh, this could be a slippery slope. Sort of couch it. For example, I say to you very often, I understand that there are, there are actual racist message boards or hate places in the dark web that you know, end up being the bathroom wall of society and most people don't want to spend time there. That's not Twitter. 
that won't be Twitter simply because you don't remove someone for saying that Anthony Fauci isn't the final voice on science. I understand that. They don't acknowledge what the other side's concern is because they don't know it. Sean King doesn't understand it. Here's the, here's the real value that conservatives, and that I hope, if nothing else, if nothing else beyond the entertainment, if nothing else I've helped you do, is to understand the way the other side thinks. I can tell you this firsthand. The left doesn't because they don't try to. They cannot even entertain the possibility that they're wrong. They're an entire group herd of Amber Herds. That's what the left is. They can never even possibly con uh, uh, fathom that they would be wrong. So now we look at this hate speech from Apple and Amazon. Okay, can we bring up the Elon Musk description? He, he was very clear about what he would do with speech on Twitter. I believe his tweet was something to the effect of, I'm going by rote here, uh, he said, you know, speech must follow the law and Twitter will not do anything that goes beyond the law. And that's very clear. So when people say things like, oh, you have free speech, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. You can if there's a fire. You just can't yell fire because it's a call to action if it's a lie that harms people. You can tell someone that you hate them. You just can't actually physically hurt them or call someone else to an action to harm them because the crime is the action, not the speech. The law is really clear on it. What they want, and they can't even agree on it. Did you listen to the phone call from the Twitter board? They're going, well, what, what are we going to do? What is going to be considered hate speech? Like, we don't know. Yeah, so you yeah, can't yeah. give us an answer, but, you want, but you're going to ban one of the top three social media platforms in the world without even defining what hate speech is? Must be so nice to have no accountability and to have supporters, sycophants like Sean King. Well, that's all that it is. Yeah. I mean, it's all... Uh, you look at places, here's the problem, is you go to a place where there is actually the dark web, or even places like Reddit that can get real dark or anything, they're not controlled, because they're not big enough to where they can actually sway anything. The reason why they're so upset about this is because it does take away their ability to sway everyone and everything, right. and to call people out publicly, and, and to actually do throw out misinformation, do things so insane, like prevent the president of the United States from talking to their people. I don't, I don't ever think that Joe Biden should be thrown off Twitter, ever. No. And I don't think Donald Trump should be thrown off Twitter. That was absurd. No. That's what they're pissed off about, is they can't get, they, they, they're no longer, they're af not even at this point yet, they're afraid that they'll no longer be in charge of the message. Right. And they're the ones that are pulling out the rug right now. They can't handle that the least popular of the big three social platforms, we're right. talking about Facebook, I'm using Twitter, uh, fa Facebook, Instagram, and then YouTube, so Facebook, Instagram is a subcategory, then YouTube is sort of a subcategory. Then you have uh, Twitter. These are the, sort of the big three. They're concerned that they just won't have control over the third. And think about it, it's the same plan of attack that they had with media, right? They had ABC, NBC, CBS. Then cable came out and they had CNN and they had CNBC and MSNBC and Fox News got a market share. Now, why did it work? Why was it so successful? They got the market share uh, for whom there was nothing available despite being seven, eight, nine networks. And they would say, they would complain and try and create laws to kneecap Fox News. It's the same thing that's happening here. Well, you have Facebook, you have Instagram, you have TikTok, along with the Communist Chinese Party. You have Google, Alphabet. You also have YouTube. They have independent fact checkers who, by the way, are getting their information straight from the White House. Seems like now you have a little bit of Spotify. Yeah, but we want Twitter too. Yeah, 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 but there's Fox News. If there's, if there's even a chance that people hear an alternative point of view, we're going to be harmed. Just like the New York Post story. With Hunter Biden, we know it would have affected the outcome. Hey, there's been Russiagate. There's been Donald Trump peeing on prostitutes. There's been him basically, uh, you know, uh, uh, shaking hands and, and, and having midnight orgies with Putin, for all you know, with these articles coming out from the New York Times and Washington Post. False story after false story after false story. But they don't Verifiably have to, false. They don't have to have accountability for themselves. They don't. Though. So That's they go, amazing. New York Post needs to be removed. Well, exactly. you got Facebook. You got, yeah, but, but Twitter, though. And then they all, you think it's chance? Why do you think Apple and Amazon... You think it's just chance that they're... If Sean King is right, and by the way, I don't necessarily... I, I, I tend to I think it's a 50-50 shot that he's just making stuff up, but... The fake... Yeah, the fake guy who made a bunch of money off of BLM. Right. But he is a quizzling, and so they will use him and throw him a bone every now and then. Yeah, I mean, he, he does own a Boys in the Hood shirt. Yes, so he does. He does. But he, even though to me he seems about as black as water polo. Yes. <laughs> seems as black as actual polo. Yes. <laughs>
But if it's true, you think it's just by happenstance that Apple and Amazon, the other richest guys out there who are powerful, happen to come together to try and take down the one rich guy. It doesn't require any inconsistency for me to say, all right, Elon Musk wants to take over Twitter. Great. I think that there should be Section uh, 230 reforms. Oh, okay. Uh, someone else owns another platform. Great. I think there should be Section 230 reforms. But for them to say, hold on a second, we need uh, antitrust. That's what Jen Psaki just said the other day, which, by the way, has nothing to do with 230. That's the bait and switch. She said 230 looking at antitrust with these big companies. Oh, hey, antitrust. How about Apple and Amazon today in agreement to remove Twitter to harm one of their competitors? Huh? What about antitrust? It requires inconsistency from the left. It, it, it's not that it just ha it's not a product. It's not a symptom of progressivism, it is a requirement to be a leftist, to abandon the concept of consistency. Uh, but you gave, but we didn't give Elon Musk his billions of dollars. No, we did not. This is a guy who made the his money. The left did. Well, they bought his, they yeah, bought his well, cars. They, did, they bought his car. Yeah, they are mad that the guy who made the electric car drivable. It's crazy. You, you drive, created the scary monster. Yeah, you drive his cars and then you're mad at him. You're like, ah, <laughs> oh, this bastard, I got to get in this car now and drive to work. I know. <laughs> they, it makes no sense. But you, you're angry at him, but you're not angry at the government who's printing out trillions of dollars while taking your trillions of dollars and mismanaging them. Yeah. You're pissed off about what a guy's doing with his money. Right. What do you care? Right. When you look at somebody like, okay, Bill Gates, MSNBC, do you have a problem with that? It's the same thing. Right. It's another source of information that's owned by a billionaire pushing that out to the public. Jeff Bezos, Washington Post. Right. Is that a problem? Is that a problem? You it's just all one the of the reporters thing. docs. Docs. Think about this. Jeff Bezos, Washington Post, one of the most powerful men in the world, had a reporter who was walking around with daddy's checkbook, daddy in this instance is Jeff Bezos, just to be clear, doxing an anonymous independent content creator with libs of TikTok. And you guys say you're for the little guy? While creating the Ministry of Truth? And I'm slowly stopping. Uh, I, I, you know, you eventually had to start using Amazon with the pandemic. Right. Because you're like, I can't go nowhere. Right. I'll have this guy come here yeah. instead. Right. But uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I'm slowly stopping to use Amazon. I just don't want to deal with it anymore. I just don't want to support the company. Right. Yeah. And, and I it's not to... against people that work there. It's just I don't, I don't like him, and I don't like his, like what he's doing. Well, it's also changed after Black Lives Matter. You know, you want to go to brick and mortar. Stores, I do, yes. but unfortunately, it's just, just the stores just have bricks through well, the windows and they've been hit with mortar shells. Yeah, there's pretty much just it's just called mortars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to buy this car? Not really. It's on fire. Yeah. Well, you know what? Fine. Uh, would you like to buy a '93 door? Yeah. Would you like to buy a '93 uh, Oldsmobile? <laughs> you can go over there to the theater. They uh, they still sell some. It's basically a used car lot. Hey, yeah. speaking of consistency, by the way, uh, the consistency of our sponsor here this uh, today, Good Ranchers. I've talked about this. Yes, they saw it here. Good Ranchers, uh, American meat delivered. One thing a lot of people don't realize is a lot of the meat you get in stores. Not coming from the United States. No, China. Nope, a lot of it. So Good Ranchers actually uh, sources it from ranchers here in the United States, and they deliver it to you. The prices are incredible. I got to tell you, I had a ribeye uh, three days ago. It was the second best ribeye I've ever had in my life. Second best. And I don't think they'll be mad at me saying this. It was the one time someone bought me a, like this ultra uber expensive dry whatever ribeye that I made at home. That was the only time, and it could just be subjective, that I would say that was the best steak I've ever had. But the prices at Good Ranchers are better than you often get in the grocery stores, better quality. And uh, right now they have uh, American, uh, an American Wagyu burger. What am I doing with this? This is, I should have, this is ribeye. Rib no, I like it more than the burger. But they have individually wrapped burgers, easy to cook. You can put them in tacos, meatballs, I don't know. But if you enter in the promo code Crowder at GoodRanchers.com slash Crowder, you will actually get uh, $25 off every delivery for a lifetime. Lock that price in right now. I bet you wish you would have locked in that price before the, the price of beef went up, uh, I don't know, what, the last two weeks? Oh, and the next two and the two after that. Yep. Buy yes. the market while it's low. And two, two free pounds of the American Wagyu. If you oh, that's right. You get two free pounds of the American Wagyu. You'll it's good. It's seriously really good. You'll die yeah. like uh, John Wayne with uh, 20 pounds of <laughs> compacted red meat. And yes, on the, <laughs> on the toilet with balls full of steak and coffee. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of those rumors. That, remember people believe that? It's like yeah. it's not possible. Uh, uh, all right. So here, speaking of that, you were talking about printing money. This yes. is something I really want to talk about, too, is uh, the recession. All right. That's uh, coming up. And by the way, we're going to go to... Which, by the way... Thought we were in one. I know. Good news, so. there's another one on the way. No, 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 no. You're someone actually feeling the effects. Oh. You're not an economist on television. I, it's just, it's, yeah, I it's the second tax bill I've got where I'm like, wow, 
All of it? Right. I was driving yesterday, <laughs> and I was talking to uh, one of my family members, and this actually happened in the middle. This person was talking about something very serious, a health issue that had uh, come up. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm listening. Well, you know what? you got to put it in uh, God's hands. And I just, and pardon if you have kids, I just, I just, well, I guess I'll hit the mute button. I was listening. I'm like, yeah, well, look, I'm here. <gasps> and the reason was I saw that gas went to three ninety nine mm. so fast. It went down for a minute. Yep. Four dollars in Texas? Mm. I don't even know how that happens. Mine well, takes premium. It's almost five again. Good Lord. Oh. So let's go through this. Okay, according to the Consumer Price Index, and I want to fill you in on this because a lot of people sort of, again, talked about the economy. Let me, let me consolidate it so you understand why we have never been in this kind of a scenario ever in the history of uh, America, and it not resulted in a bad recession. This isn't me doing a Jim Cramer and buy, sell. I'm just telling you, it's never happened before. It's been a 100% chance that with all of these indicators, you have a very bad recession. And by very bad, I mean get worse than it is now. So According to the Consumer Price Index, inflation rose by about 8.5% year-over-year in March. That's the biggest increase in over 40 years. So to give you some, uh, uh, some context, food is an 8.8% increase, energy, 32% increase. And I know what some of you are saying, that sounds really low, right? Food only 8.8. You would take that as a win. That's because these numbers are actually the result of, again, tweaking the methods of measuring inflation so it seems much lower than how we've measured it historically. Don't take my word for it. People think of us as having had 13, 14 percent inflation in the 1970s, but that's only because of the way it was calculated then. If you use the same way we calculate inflation now, it got just above 10 percent in the 1970s. So getting to eight and a half, we're actually closer to being back there than I think most people realize. Now, do you notice what he said? He said we're closer to being back there. Mm -hmm. Now, I say, I don't know if you know this, but that was a lie. Yes. Yeah. And the reason why is because if we're using that same sort of 1980 model, if it was the same model being used today, inflation would actually be closer to 17%. So he's like, we're almost there at the uh, 11 or 14. It's like, no, 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 look behind you. That's there. It's seven less. 17%. <laughs> And they get away with this. They're just like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, inflation's only eight and a half. You're like, wait a second. What about, uh, how are you doing that? Oh, no, we used to do it this way, but we're not doing it that way anymore. When in the 70s, I wasn't around, but through various documentaries and movies I've seen, people didn't drive anywhere. They, right. They really just stayed at home and cooked. Like, there was a real problem. Yeah, no, that was a documentary about last week. Oh, I see. So, I, oh, you're right. I was watching the news. Yes, yes. That's what it was. <laughs> now, regardless, and here, here are a few key indicators, and like you're talking about, there's a disconnect between what they're trying to claim on media and what you're experiencing, regardless of what Biden has been saying. Real wages are not going up. So in 2021, inflation actually outpaced wage gains by 1.5%. Yeah, you're losing money. Now. You're losing yeah, absolutely. money. Absolutely. It's the, it's the greatest tax on lower and middle class American people is inflation. It's effectively a tax for you as you experience it. Your money is now worth less than the day before. That's a really big problem. Everybody is feeling it. Now, let me explain to you the methods that the left will tell you would work and exactly why historically they've worked 0% of the time. Here is former Vice President Biden's brilliant plan. One way to fight inflation is to drive down wages and make Americans poor. I think I have a better idea to fight inflation. <laughs> Lower your costs, not your wages. Oh! Oh, that's so a good of course. idea. We could have done that. You know, yeah, that's a good idea. You should, uh, here's an idea. Go to a, a Russia for gas in China. Yes, That's exactly. a good idea. Uh, oh, Instead just of source it at home. Lower my costs, uh, not my wages. I didn't, oh, okay, so if I'm a farmer, just lower the cost of the raw materials like fertilizer. Better yet, I'll just lower the costs of ammonia. You know, uh, I'll just lower the costs of feed for the kettle. Right uh, here, I'll just lower the cost, the energy costs of what? heating and lighting a studio. You know, I've done I've done the math, and I have a bullet for me and every one of my family members left over. You are a miracle in cost lowering. This is great. I should call you Dave Rollback. Thank you. <laughs> what an ass! This is the problem, though. People listen to this and they go, "Yeah, that makes perfect sense." Yeah. I'll what do you think? They're just gouging you. They're this is the problem with this country. People think that if you franchise a subway you're a multi-billionaire i they think if you, you're a farmer you're if you own a business yeah you're automatically a billionaire you're not yeah most people struggle for a very long time to own a company and if you're lucky you come out on top people uh you know if i do airport runs and i pick them up in my car they go oh really 
Yeah, that's always a nice feeling. <laughs> so I, I just would have expected better. I would have expected better. Look, I'll tell you this. The cost of just because we, we, we have to get the mugs, unfortunately, overseas, but we have Americans who paint and etch these mugs. The costs have gone up dramatically. We haven't raised the cost for Mug Club for people out there. Why? Because we don't want to. We know that you're hurting as well. But I will tell you, it's a sting. We have to just cut some costs somewhere. We can't just bring down the cost of someone else's shit. So that's his plan. Okay. So barring that genius uh, ten-year plan, he should uh, tell Hunter to just pay less for coke. Yeah, he should. Like, no, just shortchange your dealer and see how that works. That's out. how it started. Just smoke the drywall. Yeah, yeah. All right. That's fine. That's yeah. why I went for cheese. <laughs> So the Federal Reserve, the other thing they'll have to do is the Federal Reserve is going to have to raise interest rates, okay? Now, for people who don't understand this, you hear this a lot, right? I don't know if you, when I say the Federal Reserve raises interest rates, yes. you might have some questions. What? Well, I, yeah, I get it. Okay. Some people out there, and this is not because you're ignorant, but a lot of you are an economist. It basically means the rate at which commercial banks borrow and lend, right, from the reserves. This is what we're talking about with the Federal Reserve, okay? Because some people will say, well, if they raise interest rate, that's not my rate. Well, no, we're not talking about your rate necessarily with the bank. That's what we're talking about. Well, the, the rate you rate. have locked in is not going to be, it's going to be yours. Right. So that's exactly what this government plans to do. They're going to raise the interest rate. For new buyers. To 2.75%. For, to for now. By That'll the end of higher. next year. That'll now, let me give you out what they would argue. Again, all references available at loudofcutter.com. In theory, it's simple. The Fed raises interest rates, right? That decreases demand and inflation falls. That's never happened, as the Wall Street <laughs> Journal points out. And believe me, I'm very careful to couch my words. I'm like, it usually doesn't because no, someone never. can find one example. Hey, ask me if any, like point to any example of it. Well, let's No! See. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so the Wall Street Journal. Oh, I re you, you remember the 2000, yet? No. 2008 nope. housing crisis? Nope. No. Well, you it's, never, get, it's never worked. You can get a house for basically free with a 5% interest rate. <laughs> that happened. <laughs> so, Boy, so you mean you're still paying a <laughs> shit look for your home? So the Wall Street Journal uh, pointed out uh, this, that, uh, this is a quote from Wall Street Journal. The Federal Reserve is setting out to do something it has never accomplished before. Reduce inflation a lot without significantly raising unemployment. Now, the goal is to lower inflation by 4%. Okay. They've never done that, again, ever, 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 without causing a recession. Now, rapidly increasing interest rates, that is horrible for economic growth. Take it from someone who isn't conservative and not me. What you have is an, um, an enough tightening by the Federal Reserve Means raising rates. to deal with inflation tightening. adequately. Like There's too origination. much tightening for the markets and uh, the economy. So the F Fed is going to be in a very difficult place a year from now as inflation still remains high and it starts to pinch on both the markets and the economy. Right. So what they're trying to get here is what they call a soft landing. Yeah. They use terms like tightening. Yes. Raising rates. Because if you're tightening, you're like, oh, they're going to tighten. They're going to become more fiscally responsible. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's no. no borrowing and printing money. The term tightening, it's almost the opposite of that. Well, it means you have to tighten your pockets if you want to survive. Right. Yes. That's what tightening yes. means. Exactly. Yeah. Well, the Fed lives hard and hard. We will survive. I would no, rather won't. go back into the jail and take my turns with men. It will be extremely painful oh. for me. Have you been to Kroger? That man was right. So uh, they want a soft landing. They want to try and curb demand, and they want there to be no layoffs, and they want to try and decrease inflation, and they want to avoid a recession. Here's the thing. Trying to make all of those things work by raising the interest rates, it's an incredibly unlikely scenario. And by unlikely, I mean it's never happened before. Listen to someone say it again, and then I'll explain why. So is the soft landing just pie-in-the-sky stuff? Um. <laughs> When you say soft landing, I, 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 uh, there's no going to be. Yeah, I don't. It's pie in the sky stuff. Um, well, I thanks. think that most likely what we're ha going to have is a period of stagflation, which is a soft landing. And then you have to understand right. how to build a portfolio that's balanced mm -hmm. um, for that kind of an environment. The stagflation rises. Here's the thing. For people who don't know what stagflation means, it's basically a scenario where we have high inflation in a shrinking economy, high unemployment. Okay, just to be clear. So they use these terms, tightening, soft landing, stagflation. And when I was learning about this, I was about 16 years old when I started taking an interest. I would fake like I knew, like, oh, yeah, stagflation, then go 
go back and read it and go, okay, oh, now I understand for the next conversation. So hopefully this helps you. You're not stupid if you don't know all these terms. It's designed to obfuscate. I'm trying to simplify it as much as, my, as, much as I can so that you can understand it. Their goal is to ensure that you don't understand it. It's throwing why? off a guy who's an expert in this. Right. Yeah, you shouldn't know all of it. Right. That's the goal. And the reason why is because they want you to trust the authority figures. Yep. They don't want you to have access to the science from reporters. Like all of us, they want you to trust the science, Fauci. They don't want you to really know. If they just say, well, we're talking about a scenario with high inflation and a shrinking economy, high un unemployment, you'd be like, that sucks. You'd be like, we'll just call it stagflation. What? It's not as bad. We'll just call it a soft landing. They want you to not be able to understand this so that you have to trust an authority figure like the Ministry of Truth as it relates to disinformation online. My goal is to try and make this as simple as possible. That's reductive. Dear God, I hope so. So the Fed has tried this many times before. Let me give you some historical examples. Okay, 1950s, they tried to do this. You saw inflation spikes, you saw recessions. 1970s, inflation fell, then it surged higher due to outside factors like you had the oil shock. I don't think many people would argue the 1970s was uh, a booming economy that the American public was proud of. You had the early 1980s where Fed, uh, the Fed pushed the interest rates to 20%, recession, double digit unemployment. Now, you do have 1994, Alan Greenspan raised the rates from 3 to 6%, and unemployment stayed down. Here's the thing. In that case, the Fed was ahead of inflation. Right now, they're behind it. So if someone says, well, what about the Alan Greenspan? There's a name you haven't heard in a while. Uh, there's a difference between being ahead of inflation and trying to catch up with something. It's like, imagine, right, a car in front of you versus a car behind you. It's just you and a car. You have the same pieces. You have the same elements, but a very, very different scenario. One is something you'll never catch. One is going to murder you. True. Yeah. So <laughs> it just um, makes common sense. So this is according to a Stanford economist, John Taylor. He wrote this. This is not the only time in history that they've been behind, but they are strikingly behind. Now, there are a few things that are going to make this even harder and worse because you're saying, well, maybe this will be the first time where they'll get it right. Yeah, because it's not like there's a litany of confounding outside factors right now that would take this entire stew or gumbo of fuck up in this and make it worse, like Russia's invasion of the Ukraine, which reduced the oil supply worldwide, leading to higher oil prices, right? You have a 13-year high. Higher gas prices, more expensive uh, shipping. You have a second shock, uh, shock coming to the economy when you have all these, these Western uh, you know, refineries. You're talking about these, uh, these European nations. They're now walking away from, from Russian oil. And it's not just Russian oil. That's compounded by the fact that we have an administration who's made it very clear that they don't want us to be energy independent because they want to move us to what? Renewable energy and things like electric cars. But oh shit, Elon Musk owns Twitter. What are they going to do? There's no place for them to go without being raped by their own life's previous mistakes. And it is one Wonderful. It would be if it weren't negatively affecting you. You think this guy, who right now is on CNN, former Vice President Biden, you think he's going to be stung? You think he's going to feel it? Sending more money to Ukraine, great. Great, wonderful. Perfect. $33 billion to Ukraine. Oh, fantastic. Well, you don't like Ukrainians? Uh, it's not that, though uh, most that I've met have kind of been surly. It's that I think we have people in the United States who could probably use that money. Or, hey, how about this? Just let us keep it. Well, you keep... I hate that the argument is that you, uh, Elon Musk could do how much with this many billion that he spent on Twitter. That's your money. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you told people to buy an electric car. <laughs> then they did. And by the way, he made the electric car more affordable. Yes. He has the Tesla 3. Will you get it for 30 something thousand dollars now? Oh, yeah, they're cheap now. Yeah, they're not that expensive. Now, for a car now, that's great. Well, they're all overpriced. Yeah, nonsense. they're all overpriced. It's right insane, now. but yeah. The the it's also his fault. <laughs> yeah. It's just Not amazing. How, see, the inflation makes things higher. Yes, exactly. That's how that works. Uh, the only way, by the way, for the, the demand for oil would go down is if there's a recession. So now we combine that with, again, are we in a better scenario than in the past where maybe this would be the exception? Well, we have lockdowns in China. Remember China? Yeah. 20% of the world's 90,000 container ships are currently stuck off port. 30% of all of that is in China, just to be clear. And Remember, that's the red right there? Yeah, that's the red. Is that, was that a graph that came up Yeah, that I saw? Yeah. That's so, exciting. So you have these restraints on supply chains, uh, supply chains, supply chains in China. It, it impacts all kinds of industries, like China's what? Electronics, right. home appliances, textiles, everything, everything. And here's the thing, when there's, when there's a low supply and you have this overheated demand, 
That's again, when you end up with inflation. Also something to take into account, keep in mind, you gave people money during a pandemic, you locked it down, and you gave them money for products that didn't exist because the shelves were empty. So they're sitting there with money. Guess what that does? That also ends up leading to a disruption of the supply chain, to a disruption of the value of the dollar. Anyway. Oh, we have a clip. Okay. The Shanghai lockdowns right now, they're not getting any better, of course, because uh, you, right now in Shanghai, you may not know this because... Huh, so there's still just people guys. starving to death. Uh, well, they're literally being fenced in in Shanghai right now. This is unbelievable. Come out and get your test. Yeah. We heard the Fauci say pandemic is over. Shut your mouth. Saki, speak otherwise. Where is the dog with the megaphone duct taped? This is terrifying. Yep. And keep that in mind every time you see, I don't know, like a red dawn where we have to remove the Chinese flags and replace them with North Korean flags, or every time John Cena comes out and has to apologize to the government of China because they don't want to offend them. The people who they are appeasing are the government officials doing that to their citizens. So don't accuse me of racism or anyone here of racism because we hate the Communist Chinese Party. Because we hate what they're doing to those Chinese people and you're not doing shit. You're kowtowing. Now there are fears of lockdown spreading to where? Beijing. That's going to hit global markets too. You've already seen it happen with shipping. You've already seen, well, we've already gone through that. You can hit Beijing all the Beijing is a huge market if that hits that. Yeah, it's, it's a huge. Terrifying. Market. Yeah, John Cena's going to be out of a job. Yeah, I mean, how many times can you pretend oh. the countries don't exist? I don't know. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's, you can make it your thing. You know, like Senior Wen says, like, right, no, sh there's no Taiwan. Right, no Taiwan. <laughs> hey, do it like we rehearsed. These are good people. No Taiwan. Oh, just showing up to make a wishes. Before I come in, do you think that this country exists? Yes. <laughs> and none of these children are Taiwanese, correct? Or is that just want to make sure? No? Oh, there's one? He's going to need to leave before I shake hands. Could I just uh, pull the chemo from his... Uh, can we just... Yeah. How Oops. quickly can we get him out of the wheel? I accidentally flipped one of the beds. <laughs> and I'm all natural. <laughs> yeah. So, That's why I'm 50 and look like this. Yeah. And my forehead has grown 18 <laughs> yeah, sizes. Yeah. I have to get baseball caps custom yeah, made. What, kind of, what, you know, what steroids are you taking? Frankenberries? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... You combine the international effects, and now let's go with the U.S. Uh, U.S. government spending again. This recession, it's these factors have never added up to anything other than shit. So the United States has borrowed; they spent uh, 6.4 trillion since COVID hit. Now, in 2021 dollars, for context, World War II cost us 4.1 trillion. So 6.4 trillion, and adjusting the dollars. Versus World War II, $4.1 trillion, and that actually affected the entire world. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we dropped, we dropped the bomb. We beat Hitler. Yeah. Yeah. And finally those, <laughs> finally those Japs had to pay, right? Nazi fights. We're, just, we're, so, we're a useless society. <laughs> how, how does I that, mean the world, not just America, not America. Let's say you really do. You think COVID is this pandemic and you hate it. Look, do you really think that this government actually believes when you look at what we know about COVID that it was more harmful to humanity at large than Hitler and the axis of evil? That's a pretty tough argument to make. Comment below if you want to make it. Change my mind. Well, they're using the same disease tactics depending on what part of the world you're in. Yeah, I guess. I have no idea. I don't know what diseases they had, but Hitler, well, they, you are such a disease. Well, Hitler lied about them having diseases. That's true. Kind of like the Chinese government is lying about yeah. stuff. No, let's not. No, we love China. No, China's the best. Yeah, Yay, Taiwan's YouTube. not a thing. So here we not also go back to what happened during we shut down the country. You had the government stimulus, right? They also played a huge part in ruining the job market, okay? Uh, gave people money to not work. So what happened? Still are. Right. They still, uh, they still are. Yeah, in some cases, they still are. So in February, there were 11 point something million job openings. What do we have? 11.3. OK, uh, that's four million more job openings in pre-pandemic. So when they try and tell you we're bouncing back, we're not. That's what we would call in this industry. It's, you know, uh, entertainment industry nomenclature, a lie. So there's four million more available jobs in pre-pandemic. So what happens? Look, this is very simple. You can either just believe Joe Biden who says, hey, businesses, Lower your costs or understand that companies that need workers have to increase wages. Remember when they used to fight for 15? Remember when that was a thing? Now oh, they're yeah. fighting for 25? Because 15 is a starting job. 
15 is a starting job right up the street at Dunkin' Donuts. You become a shift manager within like three weeks and you make $17.50 an hour. Now I'm saying that's not enough. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. For once, the unions are accidentally correct because of the inflation due to the politicians who you give 99% of your dues uh, to elect. So companies need more workers. What happens? They have to increase wages. And what happens? The prices go up. In March, the United States participation uh, rate for the labor force was 64.2%. That's lower than pre-pandemic. We have more job openings than pre-pandemic. And we have fewer people even trying to participate in the job market than pre-pandemic. We have crazy inflation that we did not have pre-pandemic. We have crazy gas prices that we did not have pre-pandemic. Now, what happens? Biden says that he wants to forgive. What solution? More than $1.5 trillion in student loans. So that sounds nice because people go, that means I have to pay less. I like paying less for things. Vote. Here's the problem. Where do we get it? Borrow more money or print more money. I don't know if you know this, if you have 10 of something as opposed to one, 10 makes it less valuable. Just think of baseball cards or superhero cards when you were a kid. It's never happened that the Fed prints more money without inflation following. And by the way- well, It would be impossible. It'd be impossible. It, absolutely impossible. Unless you just lower your cost. Well, sure. Just lower your cost. Stop your complaining. <laughs> Well, if you make two of something and you have it, you've lowered the value of one. Yeah, I know that when I, you know, when I cook a whole tray of the Nestle Toll House cookies, yeah. I should appreciate, I should savor each bite, but at that point I don't because I know I have another one. No, you're throwing out some of them. Yeah. Yeah, some of them go bad. You don't even R care at some point. I just rub them all over myself. It's nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> you've seen Scrooge McDuck with yeah. all the money? I, he swims in it. Yes, I, you do it with cookies. Yeah. I've been, I've been to your cookie vault. Why? Because I can. I've broken into your cookie vault. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know. I you just know. see a, I just see a Dave-shaped hole. Yeah, you'd be surprised. <laughs> landing on cookies, it is softer than coins, but still immensely painful. It's a, it's a soft <laughs> landing. It is. It's a very soft landing. <laughs> yes. It's a pie in There's the sky. There's chocolate chipflation. It's a, it's a cookie in the sky landing. Yes. Very messy. <laughs> So, um, but a delicious mess. Here's the thing. It's not just right-wing economists who are concerned about this coming, and this is why you don't really see it. This is why they want to talk about Ukraine. This is why they don't want to talk about COVID. They don't really want to talk about Twitter. They want to operate behind the scenes in the darkness, right? So they don't really want to talk about the economy because even their own people acknowledge what I've just told you. Here's former Clinton Treasury uh, Secretary uh, Larry Summers sounding the alarm. Larry, there was a Bank of America survey of fund managers out this week, uh, and the, the big headline was concerns about stagflation. It's higher than it's been since certainly 2008 or so. Uh, how concerned should we be about stagflation? You, you mispronounced I think ever. it's the most likely place <laughs> we're going to be. If stagflation means uh, rising unemployment and still high inflation, I think that's the preponderant probability as to where He's we're going to get. He's asking if stagflation over means the that. Last, right. uh, you tell us. Couple of years, prick. I've, over the next couple of years, as I've said before on your show, no David, one uh, can do anything but dance around a question. Painful fact that needs to inform our view is that we've never had a moment when unemployment was below four, inflation was above four, and we avoided recession for the next two, for the subsequent two years. And right now, unemployment's well below four, and inflation is well above four. Lots of people say, look, the job market is so strong. Why would anyone think we're going to have a no recession? No one's saying that. What no the one's data saying that show from you. is that the lower unemployment yeah. is, the more likely it is that it's going to uh, turn down in subsequent months. All right, look. But that guy just said it's bullshit. Let me give you a wrap up, okay? Just so we can, let's, let's go through the sequence of events. All right, shut down the economy, destroy the world, spend more money than we actually spent during World War II. Yeah. Okay, do that. Then we punish businesses. We force them to stay closed. We give people money to stay home. Then we make sure that we are no longer energy independent or we ensure that we won't be energy independent in the future. And then we have ex uh, extemporaneous, uh, uh, extraneous factors here like China, we have Russia, we have Ukraine, which skyrockets the prices of oil, right? So gas, energy, and instead, the solution that we see coming from this administration is, hey, just reduce your costs of goods. So what happens? People are paid to stay home and not work. Businesses now that have 
if they're lucky enough to still be a lot, still be open, have to pay more for the same product and pass that cost on to consumers, again, more inflation, then we borrow more money than ever in the history of the United States and print more money than ever in the history of the United States, which we know leads to more inflation. And now in this case, what we just want to do to solve it is spend more money and raise interest rates, which again, have caused more inflation. But the good news is they're spending more time on ensuring that your, uh, your six-year-old can transition from Chet to Sparkle. So they have their priorities straight. They're also also making sure that, uh, you know, misinformation online isn't getting out there. And uh, they're making sure that they communicate with the folks at Spotify and Apple and Amazon to ensure that Elon Musk, the guy whose cars they just told you to buy due to their skyrocketing energy prices and uh, all-time high gas prices, by the way, to make sure that their guys now hurt their competition in Elon Musk on Twitter, because God forbid you actually have access to free information. Look, let me ask you this. You see all of these things happening. Look at each individual step. All references available at lotofcutter.com. How are any of them justified as doing it for you? The only one that someone can make an argument is the $1.5 trillion in student loan forgiveness if you're a selfish prick. But outside of that, it's pretty hard to even argue that these were done to help you, the working American or the small business owner. Never. It's been designed to help them, and you are dealing with the consequences. We have never had a similar scenario. I'm leaving you with this. We have never had a similar scenario taken these same steps and ended up with anything other than the American taxpayer, and that's all American taxpayers, not just the poor, not just the middle class, not just the rich, all American taxpayers being screwed, period. An exception? No. No exceptions. We're going to take some chat, and there's also an inter-office fight here over a wheelchair which is going to get heated and we can't what? talk about on YouTube. So YouTube, uh, we're going to Mug Club. You better piss off.